Hello, my name is Patrick and I work at the Southwest Regional Library. Today I'm going to show you many comics that are super easy to make and super easy to share, and then we'll have a look at some of the cool stuff that other people have done with this format. First, let's make a template for your comic. All you need is a regular piece of paper, scissors, and something to write with. I'll go through this really quickly, but you can come back and pause and rewind as much as you need. So now that you have your template, you're ready to start making comics. Except you might be wondering, what can I do with only six pages that are this small? Well, the answer is just about anything. So let's have a look at some comics that show you how much potential there is, even on this tiny scale. Little Bird Learns About Copyright is by Katrina Bush, and she made it for UNC's Sloan Art Library. It's a very cute and simple story about a bird artist who is trying to use other artists' work uh, while doing so respectfully and legally. It was made for a college audience, but still in this super cute style, which goes to show you there's many ways to reach your audience, no matter what your subject matter. This next one is called La Fille de la Mer, and it's by Meredith Laxton. It's a quiet but moving story of family and loss by the seaside, and I particularly like the way she chose to print her artwork in black and blue ink on this blue paper. It adds visual depth that works really well with the emotional weight of the story. Or you could go the interactive route, like Riziki Omandi did with her Afro coloring book. Her images are energetic and lively, and they feel almost like a maze for your eye to wander through, which makes perfect sense for a coloring book. I also really like the way that she used two-page spreads which makes a very big visual impact even on this small scale. In case you couldn't tell from those images, all three of these comics use the same format that I showed at the beginning of the video, all using regular old 8.5 by 11 letter size paper. But once you get familiar with the technique, you can start with different sizes of paper to get different sizes of comics. If you use legal size paper, so that's 8.5 by 14 inches, you'll get something very close to the size of My Dream Comic by Ryan Cecil Smith. This is apparently a real dream that he had in which a tour guide, who is a rabbit, took a group of visitors through his own subconscious. And it's part of the reason that he got back into making comics after a long period away from that. If you start with paper that's 11 by 17 inches, which is sometimes called tabloid, you'll get something close to Our Library by Amanda Baeza. This is another true story told in a surreal way about a small community that decided to create their own library. The publisher here is Kush, and they're based in Latvia, but they publish works of this exact size by cartoonists from all around the world with a huge range of artistic voices. And if there's a particular size that you want your comic to end up, all you have to do is multiply that by 2 in one direction and 4 in the other to get the correct starting paper size. 
This one is three and a half inches square, and it's called Brown and Monolingual by Amber Padilla. It's about the artist's own experiences being an American Latina woman who only speaks English. It has beautiful watercolor art, as you can see, and a really affirming message too. And this one is three inches wide and eight inches tall, and it's called Je veux danser comme Jean Kelly by Max de Radiguet. It's about the night that Max was lucky enough to see a reel from an unfinished movie starring Audrey Hepburn and Gene Kelly while he was a student at the Center for Cartoon Studies in White River Junction. It's an unusual format and it takes a minute to get used to, but it's really compelling and ends up being very personal as well. And they're super easy to share too. Since the end product is so small, you can easily put one in an envelope and for the price of a letter, send it to all of your adoring fans. If you start with paper that's 11 by 17 inches, you can even tape it shut and mail it without an envelope. Just be sure to leave the back cover for address and postage, and follow all the rules that you can find at this very long web address. If you start with regular letter size paper, you can also take a photo or a scan of your finished product and easily email it to a friend, although you want to make sure that they have a printer and instructions for how to fold it. So you can either show them this video or print out these instructions that Jen Wang gave us at the last Durham Comics Fest. And if that works better for you, you should use them too. So now all that's left is for you to make your tiny masterpiece. And if you make one, we definitely want to see it. So share us a photo or a link in the comments below. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.